In the Board of Health meeting for June 18, 2019 at 6.35 p.m. Um, we have a few uh, things to go over tonight. And just for those in the room, we do have, um, typically we have what in the beginning of this, of every meeting, uh, open discussion for public to come in and speak. Uh, I think I know why most folks are here tonight. So if it is in, in regards to um, the reporting of um, uh, the review, or I should say the detailed spreadsheet uh, for review topic, you'll all have a chance at that time when we get to it to speak, so um, you don't have to do so right now because we got a couple, just a couple quick things before it and then we'll be right to that. So if there's something other than anything we have on our agenda tonight that you came here to talk about, I'd, I'd welcome that at this time if you're interested. Okay, seeing none. Um, a couple quick things, the chair report. Um, I reached out to our state senator, Jason Lewis. Um, he was recently on a committee to um, look at and revise ways that the common can help uh, local boards of health and regional boards of health be more efficient, more productive. Um, so we kind of played phone tag over the, the week, end of the week and weekend. Um, but I'd like to invite him in at some point to kind of give us a little bit more of a detailed report on exactly what that could uh, mean for the town of Reading for, for this board. So um, that's one of them. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up uh, real briefly, as well as we have, I'm, I'm too bad she's not here tonight, she is sick. One of our former voting members and current associate member, Heidi Pfeiffer, is no longer uh, going to be on the Board of Health. This was, was to be her last meeting, which is too bad, but I wanted to thank her uh, for her service to the town and um, wish her all the best in the future. Other than that, I have nothing, so I will turn this over to the Health Age Report. Um, I included my Health Age Report the way we do it currently. It's on the third page. So in the month of May, there was 44 inspections that were conducted. Two complaints. Out of those two complaints, both complaints were corrected. There was no animal inspections. Those were closed for the season. There was two septic abandonments in town. No flu shots. We've actually returned all the flu shots that weren't administered because flu season is over. There was no cases in Maven, and Maven is if there's any communicable diseases in town. That's the reporting system that the nurse gets that tells you what the diseases are. Or it could be anywhere from salmonella to the flu to anything. There's nothing going on right now as far as that goes. Um, no violations as far as tobacco establishments, any place that sells tobacco. Everybody kept with their the age appropriate and making sure that they were buying them from the right locations. And then the second section, actually, the last section actually segues into the report, which is the comments from Heidi, Eleanor, and Emmy, oh, right. how they want the report. Right. It's all done. Does anybody have a question on my report? No. Okay. Um, with that, uh, we can start to uh, discuss what um, I'd like to thank, um, first of all, Paul Shard, who is actually the person who came to our last meeting and a uh, local resident and offered to help us out by giving us somewhat of a format uh, for us to use in looking at how we want to um, have our health agent report back to this board in regards to inspections and reinspections uh, that go on here in town. So, Paul, thank you very much for putting that together. Greatly appreciate it. And he, he'll be here any, with any questions for board members or, or otherwise, public as well, um, if it comes up. Um, so I'd like to get a little bit of uh, feedback from my board members. Um, I know they have some in here um, that is in the health agent report, but get some uh, feedback from board members in regards to what the thoughts are, the likes, dislikes on this, and I certainly will um, open up for the public as well too. And is there any way we could get this up on the, on the screen just so the, the public maybe, I'm thinking everyone in this room may or may not have yeah. had a chance to see this or not. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need the white guy too. The white guy. And while we're doing that, um, thoughts? Um, so first of all, I wanted to thank everybody. Really helpful to have a start. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and I had sort of two reactions. One was the initial reaction is, this is fantastic, this is exactly what we need. And the second reaction was, if we were in an ideal situation, what would I, as Board of Health member, want? Um, and so that's where these comments came from. And I okay. Think. Ideally, I would want to have um, establishment names to be similar to what other towns have done, and I would want to have specific violations that can be coded, um, but so that can be searchable by the public. But the other comment that I made is that I wanted um, what I think we have received, which is feedback from the business community on their thoughts and the public as well. Sure. Okay. Um, um, Larry, you have any thoughts? Um, I think the template is a great start. I think, I think generally uh, it's always good to start really simple and to outline what we're trying to solve for or what we're trying to fix. So, right. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Really honing in on what are we currently doing and if there's an element missing what's the solution and let's think creatively, but I don't think moving to a solution that's super comprehensive is automatically the next best step. Right, and right. You start small and, and go from there. Yeah, I mean, you can always modify things, mm -hmm. um, for better or worse, in that, in that regard, but you can always at least modify them. Okay. My thought, I, I, I kind of had this, the initial reaction Ellen, that you had. I thought this was a pretty, um, um, simple layout that allows both for us to get a little bit more specific information to the public as well as easy for our staff um, to update on a regular basis um, which we're you know staffing right now is is low where we are down in inspector um, uh, currently we have that that, that um, job posted um, as well so that that's always pressing on me um, I thought the part though from a standpoint that I liked the most was the reference to having the businesses referenced on here more from a code standpoint than an actual name um, listed on here as far as public health goes our biggest objective obviously is making sure that we are protecting the public health um, having Laura out in the field doing inspections and reinspections is that uh, one of those, or any of our inspectors is that main um, arm of our ability to do that. So I don't know that having a spreadsheet with every um, business listed in here in town and kind of there's no rating system, but the you know fractions incurred on here is necessarily something we're obligated to do. We've already protected the public health by. Uh, making sure that they're out there and doing their inspections and reinspections, and that's really where our obligation is. I think one thing probably people don't realize, and, and I was one of them up until a couple of weeks ago. You can go down to any business in town. Business owners may not want me saying this, but I'm going to say it. You can go down to any business in town, and they have. And if you ask for their latest inspection report, they do have to provide it for you. So there's a couple of mechanisms for the public if they're very interested to get the information they're looking for. I don't know that we necessarily want to be the ones posting it up there um, on our website every month. It's, it's not really in our, uh, I shouldn't say it's not in our purview, but it's not necessarily in our mission uh, from a standpoint of making sure we protect public health you know, just because we have it listed. But that's something if somebody really feels like they, they need to know this type of information, they can get it. Uh, they can request it from the town, they can request it from the businesses themselves. So because of that, I thought this system was, was really good and I, I talked with Laura a little bit about it. I think we have, if we liked it so much, we'd have to tweak the levels because it's one offense, two offense level, not three of them. Is that correct? Or how is that? Yeah. Well, critical, non-critical. Okay, so we only have two categories. So there's little things like that, I'm sure, from a technical standpoint that we could tweak this. But I, I did like the format in general. So, um, Laura, do you have any comments before I open up to the public? Well, I'd like to say that in the two years that I've been here, all the restaurants and all the establishments have, if they have had an issue, they were mostly small issues and they were corrected immediately, and that there has been no food one outbreak in town in the two years that I've been here. Oh, that's always good to hear. So I don't, I don't see a problem. Yeah, I, I think that's my point too. I think protecting public health is number one. Um, not necessarily having every little detail about uh, the relevance of it posted. Um, 
you know, I, I think it's good to have some on here, and I certainly think if there's, if it comes up, we have, for example, business number 104, oh, continually on on our violation number two uh, level. You know, that that I think is a different topic. You know, th then I think it's certainly fair game to have it, have that discussion about what's going on with that particular business at an open meeting. Uh, but I don't know that just on a day-to-day -day operations thing. Um, on general business where they're going out just doing inspections, re-inspections would be the same. It doesn't rise to the same level to me. Do you mean to have a discussion by name or as one of four? Um, are you saying if, if there if it continues? Yeah, if it was like no, I think that point you know it's it's certainly um, something that we should discuss by name. Uh, at that point, I, I think you know if if the problems keep coming up and they're not being fixed, or they're being fixed and they keep happening, being fixed, keep happening, and it's and it's at such a high level that it's certainly an interest to the public health. That to me is always fair game. I would like to point out though that the use of the codes 101, 102, they wanted the page people had commented that they wanted the page following to say what restaurant 101 was so you could go to the next page and see 101 was wherever mm -hmm. a, xyz well so it's the same as just having the name in there right I would prefer having the name in there. so that would be putting the name instead of 101 i mean this is so i guess my vision sorry i just came in yeah go ahead bit. run with it my vision is that there are sort of two separate things. There's there's a document for the board to be able to track activity um, and violations, and then um, there's something else for the public. Um, which will be some of that information and not necessarily all of that information. But regardless, I think having the business name is fine. Kevin, she missed the part uh, where you said about the Member being able to go to the location. Yeah, so I, I was. Full disclosure. So there, in, in town, if, if people are very interested in this, my point was I, I don't know that we should be um, putting businesses on here on our website uh, with all these infractions listed. It's it's a little bit almost of a public shaming um, to, to kind of have that up there because it's not really in our um, job description. You know, we're, our job description is protecting public health, not necessarily giving, you know, being having to make exact detail available. It's available to people who want. It. They can come request it from us. They can come request it directly from the business. So I, I just don't see this, the um, having the names in there is something that would be something beneficial to public health in any way. I think it helps with transparency, and um, and there are plenty of other towns that do this and states that do this. So I guess it don't. Do you know any other towns like ours? What do you mean like ours? Is it like size-wise, makeup-wise, like? Do um, you know how Wakefield or Stoneham or anyone, like even surrounding ones, I, do it? I, Wakefield and Stoneham do not do that. Yeah. I think there are plenty that you can find that don't do it as well. Right. I run yeah. five yeah. and we don't. None of the towns that I am in. Um, Salem and. All right. Before I hope. Okay. Yeah. I know everyone wants to talk, but before, <laughs> well, no, before, we, before we you do it, we kind of have a process. I should uh, let me let me do that really quick right now while we're discussing this. Um, I, I will give everybody a chance to talk, but we need a couple of things. We just need you to give us your, your name and if you live in town, your address, or if you're just, if you're just a resident or if you're a business owner, um, your business name is fine. Um, so, but just, just give us kind of a minute to let us kind of work through it. I, I know everyone is anxious to, to say something. I'm, I'm, I promise you will all get your chance. Um, I was going to say, I do think it's a fair point to make it clear which things are minor because that's the vast majority of what we encounter. Sure, right. And, and, I, and I think it's, you know, a fair point to just, um, even, even, I can't remember how Boston does it. They just say minor violations on the public website and don't list the specific violations. Mm -hmm. They may only list them if they're in the top two categories, actually. Um, and then put in date corrected, you know, all that is corrected. Mm -hmm. 
So how, how do we list violations? So we got two categories of violations. What would you call them again? Minor and major? Um, critical. Or critical. No, but that's not. So that was another thing. Is I, um, so I asked Eleanor for copies of a couple of the inspection reports from before that she had done before the last meeting and um, uh, no just sharing information yeah I shared it the last meeting yeah there were one that she yeah right. I just asked her to send me the copies um, and I, w I was really looking to get an idea of data metrics that I was interested in for this. But what I ended up picking up on is we were using the 1999 FDA food code and Massachusetts adopted the 2013 food code um, eight months ago. Yeah, we haven't adopted it yet in writing. Okay. We can't even get past this, the tree lines. How are we gonna get to that? Well, that that is sort of an ASAP thing. Well. I'm one person and I work 37.5 hours and I do inspections, do all your reports, I answer all your emails. So this sounds like adopting something isn't as simple as just putting it into a, plugging it into a system. We need a different inspection report. Okay. We need to, it would be great if we could uh, provide some sort of training for businesses to know what the differences are. Yeah, yeah, that would be, that would be something I think we should absolutely do. But, I call I called the state to verify and they were surprised. <laughs> no, actually, a lot of towns have. It. How are they, they, really are they? What's the leeway? What are they giving towns and cities to um, to comply? She told me that that the date it was promulgated was October fifth, and their I don't think they've set a, a hard deadline. No, they they that's they're that's kind of they everybody. Okay. That everybody would have it done by the end of the year. And in, in this year or the year that they enacted? End of the year that they enacted. Okay. So they gave them three months. Okay. But they still have them circled back on it. Okay. <clears throat> That's interesting. Um, so, <laughs> okay. That throws kind of a, yeah. um, a wrench in the whole thing. Um, all right. Well, I, I think. But it could still be. We can still talk about. Yeah, we could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, yeah. they're going to be priority, priority foundation, and core. So well, there'll be three levels, but core is the non-critical, and then they separate the critical into two categories. Okay, so There's we're just going to we're just going to have to change this after we after we mod after we accept it, something basically then. Yeah, but it sounds like modification. And then and then we have to start working on getting that adopted. And we'd have to figure out exactly what that entails and how many how long. Um, something like that is to implement. Okay, that's for another night. Um, thank you, that's interesting information. Um, there are a lot of people in the room, so I do want to open, unless there's something else anybody wants to discuss. We, we're going to discuss this after anyways, yeah. okay. um, but I just want to make sure everybody in the room has a chance to, to say, okay. Something. Well, yeah, sure. I'm taking notes, but <laughs> okay, go ahead. Just, I guess, a couple of points that I'll raise for discussion. Um, the reminding us that yes, our mission is for, to protect public health. It's also to make this information available to the public. We've said the public can go request it from a business, or they can request it from here. Um, but I do think there's a limit on how many they can request before that time it just gets to be too much of a burden, and we have to start charging. Uh, so I don't feel like if a citizen wants substantial information, that's as very easily accessible like what they could get with the spreadsheet without paying for it. And so I don't want us to have too many barriers in place for people who want a lot of information. Um, so I just wanted to, to point that out about how we need to make these publicly, you know, um, easily accessible to the public. Um, and then I wasn't clear on whether or not to Emmy's point that I think it makes sense that we have one um, document sort of for the Board of Health for tracking purposes, you know, and that can either have the name, the business name, or not have the business name as long as we have a reference for what that code means. Um, I wasn't clear on whether or not we were saying that if the if someone, for example, came in to get an inspection report, they would be able to see on the inspection report this is business number 101, or if they would not at any point have access to that information. 
so that's just a question I was raising. Does that question make sense? Yeah, it does. And, and I think I know where you're following where you're going with that. If we were, for example, if we were to adopt this just as it was, um, could somebody come come and ask us for reference to what that business 302, 301 right. represented? Yeah, I mean, I, I think if from a standpoint of not having it as a billboard up on our, our website, um, which which to me is my preference, um, but if making it available to the public to be able to um, find out what that business reference is, is different. You know, I, I my feeling is I, I just don't like the billboard aspect of having it out there. Um, I, I just don't know that it's necessarily 100% fair. Um, and I don't know the big part of which it doesn't do anything to change our, um, our policies on protecting public health. It doesn't add to it, doesn't detract from it. It's just it's just information that's there. So we're just we're putting something up that we don't necessarily have to. For somebody though that really is interested in it, that's not a bad idea. Can you know allowing them to now come in and say I'm interested in business 301, in in that infraction. So at any point in time, just because I know you missed this, Emmy, at any point in time, if you wanted to go to restaurant X Y Z and ask them for their report, it's there and available for you. If you came to the counter and wanted to see the file on XYZ, you could see the file and take pictures of it with your phone or ask for a couple of copies. If for some reason you needed a copy of every single solitary restaurant for every single inspection report, then that would be a public records request that might incur a cost. But. Can I ask a question? Um, yeah, is, is everybody okay? I'll, 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 <laughs> just, just, just give us, just give us your name and, and, uh, and where, and where you're from. Diane Mahan from Pumpelius. Thank you. I was just wondering if this is something that happens often. Are people in Reading constantly looking for reports? Is this? I mean, are there ten requests a month, twenty, or is this kind of a? Are you trying to just be ready just in case someone wants some information? In two years that I've been here, no one has ever requested it except for board members. Okay. So originally this started out as a, a mechanism to um, provide the board members with a little bit more specifics into exactly what um, what the inspection was or the level of the infraction was. Was it followed up on? Was it corrected? Um, so it was kind of more, I wouldn't say internal, as anything that we do is public, um, but it was, for lack of a better term, more from a reporting standpoint than anything else, back to the board from the health agent. Like, does that feel accurate where, where, where this all came from? Yeah, and, and I would say to that point, I, you know, I personally would be comfortable with starting with something like this, that it's for the board and delaying any uh, Roll it out, see how it works. Yeah, I, I would like to. I think Laura ask made that only exact. Because we've made changes point. on my report every single month for two years, that we just pick away and go with it for at least six months, a year, because it's been a change every month. Question. Okay, yes, sir. Just your name. My name is Art. Art. I go in Columbus Pizzeria. Okay. I believe five years ago, this was done in this town for like one week or two. And people just didn't like it. Okay. Might be. I, I think I'm almost 100 percent sure. Unfortunately, I was hoping there was someone in the room tonight who was on this board at that time that could have reported to that. Um, but they're not. But yeah. I do remember such a thing, and okay. everybody didn't like it. Gee, Larry, that would have been under Larry. Um, it's been such a. Uh, I think it was Ruth Clay. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Yes, sir. The, thing, the reason I think people didn't like it because I read what they said and I understand what, whatever they say. They're able to fall. They don't get it. They don't get it. I mean, I got rid not because I didn't have uh, uh, for the hood cleaning. I didn't have it on me. It was done, but I didn't have a certificate. Oh, okay. Now, that's not a big deal because I can go home, pick it up, show it to you. But to somebody, it'd be like, you know what? Maybe you didn't do it right. right. And, you have right. and you have 10 days to provide that, so it's not a big deal. So, right. that's the only problem is, it's okay. like a fine, fine print. If people don't see it as a violation, they see, you know, it's a big thing, so. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. I think um, part of the... Just, just give us your name. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Chris Clue. Thank you. I run the Cafe Nero here um, and a couple other times. 
And so some of the towns have been very active with the 2013 code. And there's four main things with the 2013 code. The number one that pertains to this is you have to have a sign in the front of your establishment that says, hey, customer, you can ask for the inspection report. So it's not like we're even trying to hide from that. Okay. So it's up there. The thing to address his point, which is very valid, <coughs> is like we get violations. You know, we haven't run a clean one in any where I've ever been. I've been in this business for 30 years, never had a perfect report. When you're talking about tracking, you know, level twos and level threes and level ones and all that kind of stuff, you just talked about, hey, you know, I'm gonna wanna see a place that had you know, an issue all along. They're different level ones, they're different level twos. He didn't have, you know, an inspection sticker. Um, one of my girls at my last one had a vape pen out and she had it instead of in her pocket or out back, she had it, you know, over by the microwave. That's a violation. His is a violation. We may get one down the road that I don't, you know, like we have a pest company, but we don't, maybe I don't have the person in charge at the time at the moment doesn't have access to it. So I think the issue is, is, it, is that in protecting the customer, I don't think there's anybody who's here right now who is more concerned about the customer than you are. We're more concerned than you are. Because if you go home sick, you don't go back. And, you know, and, and that's a big deal to us. <coughs> Using Nero as an example, we actually have another company called Steratech that comes to us once a month and does an inspection on top of Laura's inspection. Everybody is as concerned, if not more, than you all are. Because we all want to protect the customer because the customer, you know, none of us would be in this business if we, you, you can't stay. I mean, you know, my, my next door, he's been in business for 16 years. You know, that's that's because, you know, he runs a good shop. And I think we're, we're, we're treading on small mistakes that are fixed sometimes in the next five minutes, but she has to write it down, you know? So like using Abby and her vape pen, you know, it was fixed 37 seconds later, but it still exists on my health report. Um, and then the other part of the code, you know, just says that you have to have that sign up there. And if you go to, because I run multiple times, we've already put ours up. But it's, it's a simple little sign, the state has said what it has to be, and you just post it and put it and it's done. You know, and we have like a file out back, so if you come in and say, hey, can I see your report, boom, 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 here it is. And we put all four of ours in there, so we've had every one from the last one. So you can, if a customer is really concerned, they can find out all this. So the question I have is, are we putting the cart before the horse, to, to mirror her question earlier? Okay. Yeah, this is sort of why I was suggesting that we rule this out for us first and then you'll we'll have a sense of what we're seeing because we don't we don't know the details right <coughs> you mean we don't have the tracking details right as explicitly as they're laid out there right. okay yeah well, we have two people sorry sure. Go ahead. He gave, he gave it the I'm Kristen. I'm the school nutrition director for the schools in Reading. Um, my concern is twofold. One, um, to mimic what um, he said, if there's no opportunity to explain the violation to the layman, then I think that you're opening up everybody for criticism um, that maybe is unwarranted. Um, we, we too, we post, ours are all posted in every school building all the time and everyone is available to customers at all times. So uh, transparency is key with us. We really, uh, we want nothing but to keep the children safe. So the, the violation isn't even the problem, it's the ability to understand why the violation happened and what we did to rectify it and what we did to prevent it from happening in the future. So I, I think that all of us share that concern uh, because once it's out there, it's out there and I'm not sure how quickly you're gonna update it. Um, are you gonna put a comment that you know the, the issue was a town issue with water, not the school district? Or I mean, all the different things that could come into play with why a violation happened is where that relationship with the Board of Health agent and the other inspectors comes into play. Um, you know, they are critical of us because they're worried about the public health and we are looking to them for training, advice, help understanding the code and finding solutions to the problems and we get that right now so I want to thank Laura's staff and and because I've been here for 15 years and we've always had an amazing relationship 
the other piece is, um, and I'm so sorry, I forget your name, but um, for you to have that in this room and have it as your mechanism, it's a public record because you're, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Correct. regardless of what purpose you use it for, you post it or not, it's a public record. So if you start defining all of the all of us by a number, and you start pulling all that data together and sorting it and looking uh, for key result indicators, whatever you're looking for, um, it's going to be part of the public record. So I just caution you on what decision you make because you might have um, unintended consequences. Thank you. I'm going to have this gentleman down here first, and then I'll come back to you. My name is Michael Palmer. I'm from Zillies on Main Street. Um, so this kind of just fell in my lap recently. Someone made me aware of this. I was not aware that this discussion, I don't know when it started. If I'm listening to you correctly, you guys approach this obviously for the reason of protecting the public. We understand that. But then secondarily, to help the board be more aware of what into each individual unit may or may not be doing. It was, it was more for reporting back to the board. That was the really the, the main basis where this originated from. Yeah. Okay. Right, and to make those these records are public record to make them easily accessible to the public, well, I, I, which we are required I'm, to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm really upset by this whole approach. I think the approach is, it's $100 worth of effort for a probably a minus two return on investment, the way I look at it. I've been in Melrose, Rubin, Winchester. I've never seen this. Now, you had suggested you've seen other towns do this. I don't know of any that do it. I think it's going to make us, business-wise, very non-competitive, because as soon as you put this online, with social media and just public the way they are, they're going to make, they're going to misinterpret this, and the next thing you know, you're an unsanitary place, and the business is just going to go down. Um, and my, you know, that's just personal. I think as a town, economically, you're going to just disencourage people from wanting to even come here, and then you're going to kill the people that are here because I don't want to be in an environment when. I'm being publicly shamed for working as hard as I do, as well as all my other people. I don't see anything wrong with the current system that's in place, that's been in place for the 25 years I've owned my own restaurants. You have a relatively easily interpreted state sheet, I believe, yep. that is, you're telling me is publicly available to anybody who wants it. So why are we reinventing the wheel by putting a billboard on the town of Reading, Massachusetts that's saying, hey, by the way, this restaurant's got this infraction, this infraction, this infraction. And then Joe Smith doesn't know doesn't know or really care to know because people like drama and they like the dramatics of things. And then they say, oh, we're never going there again. And that's going to catch like wildfires. You're going you're to destroy businesses on a cycle. Now, I don't understand why... Laura. Laura, we work well with Laura. Laura comes in, she she inspects our property. Um, if there's a critical violation, then we suffer the consequences of it and we do the reper repercussions of it and we act accordingly. I, I think the system's pretty good. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if we're doing something that's so egregious that we are um, putting the public at risk, pull the license. I would sooner have you pull my license for a, a violation than to post me in the newspaper or wherever else for a bunch of stuff that no one's going to understand or really care to understand. They're just going to use it as a social media platform to pop you on Facebook and Instagram and Yelp and everything else that's fighting us on a daily basis. I think this thing should be tabled. It should be re-understood and re-approached and maybe with some of the people in this room because you know, I'm a, I'm a father with four kids and 25 employees. You, you, you guys, it's a direct attack, the way I look at it. It's my, it's my position. Okay. So I think I have this gentleman next. My name is Carmen from the Venetian Room. I agree with what the gentleman just said, and I think these guys are looking for a, a solution to a problem that really doesn't exist. There's no problem. There is no problem. I mean, all the information is available to, to the public. <clears throat> so you're making this big thing over nothing. It's going to cost the city a ton a lot of money, and you're going to get no results out of it. It doesn't make any sense. May I, one more thing, I'm sorry, just to, just to piggyback. For the amount of effort that's going to go into creating this, managing it, and fine-tuning it, I mean, 
she's on a 37.5 hour work schedule. You guys are on your schedule. I mean, where's this time going to come from? And if that time and that investment is out there, why don't you put it into more um, inspections or inspectors rather than creating something that we're probably never going to get right in the in the timetable that I'll be in business. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean? Probably for anybody that's in this room or on these boards. I know you're trying to do the right thing and you're looking out for the public health, but as this gentleman said, no one in this room is trying harder to do a good job than individual operators. Uh, you know, franchises are in the, their stuff is a bigger picture. But you got a lot of mom and pop shops in here that, you know, we work hard. And th this is just, I, I don't see it. I've never heard it in any of the time. I've just been, I know in like, I started in like New York, they do a grading system, I think A, B, C, D, one. And I thought that was pretty uh, difficult. Uh, you know, I thought that was aggressive. But I think this this makes that look, I look at it, it's almost like a public shame. Now, can I, can I ask you a question in regards to that? Are you referencing this just as it is where we'd be referencing a business by uh, a number or a code? Or is it more if the if the name was up there, that's really where well, you're think, talking you know, about? Or is it both? Happens, right? People are going to try to connect the dots. So even if you have a number, eventually you're going to say, okay, 102 is Fusilli Pacina. You know what I mean? Uh, and here's the problem. Say, the, the somewhere. say they don't know what either, and they said 102 is, you know, Bertucci's, but they said that's but what it's really so not. Now you're killing everybody. You know what I mean? I just, I, I don't, I don't understand the amount of energy um, going into this. I think this, um, it may be not perfect, but it works pretty well statewide, as far as I know. And, um, Do you want to? I need to get yeah, the first. Jay from Budmashi Tavern. I just want to um, address what you said about transparency. I don't know where you think that there's anything being hidden. Um, that you want this thing so there is no bar to no transparency or make it transparent. Um, the town hires professionals to take care of the public interest and the board of health's interest. So, are, are you saying that health department is hiding items on you? Or are you saying that the public is entitled to be able to go on the computer when they're up at night and just scroll through everything? If it's there, they're going to go on to look at it. Not because they wanted to see it before, but because it's there. And it starts a game of telephone. And they're going to tell people, I saw this. Do you know what they had? Just for an example, two years ago when Laura first came on, the uh, acting director at that time came to me to introduce himself and also to follow up on a, an anonymous complaint that was received. But he had to come and inspect it. That was the same time that this previous board were trying to make these things online and open to the public and open to yourselves. As it explained to me then, he, we chit-chatted, we had absolutely heat in, uh, inspected the whole place. It wasn't a regular inspection, we'd already done that. But because they received a complaint, an anonymous complaint, the police department won't take a complaint without getting their name, your telephone number, your social security number, and your date of birth. But what went through to the health department was an email, anonymous, making a claim about my location. They came over and checked it out. It was not founded. But that would have been online for the public to see, and that would have became, they had this issue. Or was reported well, that it yeah. was an so, I read it. I don't like that. Right. I mean, I, that's, 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 that's the system. That's the system. That's how it works. Right. I, yeah. I think there needs that's what's to gonna be a way of... Um, Can I ask just one question? Is anybody on the board uh, safe service certified? I'm not, I know about that, but. So you don't actually know what the codes are as they are listed between critical, non critical, whether they are red items. Um, you, you've obviously seen a health inspection report after the inspection is done. You've seen all the brackets where it breaks it down to all the different sections. Mm -hmm. Every one of those items is covered when you take. The certificate, the certification exam. Every one of these businesses is all certified and have multiple people on the premises uh, certified. So there's no transparency here. We do our job, and as everybody was saying, the most important thing for us is to keep our customers happy and healthy. But putting something online for the public to have a look at something like this that they don't understand that it was a vape pen left out on the counter that it was somebody's apron was put down on a table. They're, they are violations, but they're not gonna affect anybody. And I just think that this will cause mass hysteria I mean, and ruin businesses. I do agree that I don't believe this should be put on the website as that. 
I don't think it should go on the website at all. Exactly. What I think you the other I'm one. Sorry, I'm confused. I'm sorry. I'm confused now because that's exactly what you wanted. Was this all on the website? I don't want the complaints on there. I don't want the. I, there are two separate things. I think the second every issue here is that. So, Cafe Nero, we have 30 stores. If we had a bad thing, the store can ride it out for the two three months that the public has a bad experience with us. Okay. The other chains or bigger establishments can do that. You have a lot of people in this room are either res Reading residents or doing business in Reading who have you said, hey, for two months, I'm gonna knock 20% of your business off, 30% of your business off. They don't have anybody else to help them. Yep. You're affecting them, their livelihood, their family. There's the, 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 it's just, it's just huge. And then to keep on going back to, and, and she said it, and it's been said a couple different times here. If we talked about what we all would talk about 30 years ago, but no, it's going to go on Facebook. It's going to go on, you know, and then the telephone thing. It's going to be like, you know, well, my mother said, yeah. and and now it's not a vape pen anymore. No. It was they were selling marijuana on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> behind the counter. You know what I mean? And then the other guy was doing a line, and because by the time <laughs> that's where you get this stuff goes, yeah. and and I guess that's where mine is. Is that because again, Cafe Nero, we have a bad inspection, and let's say it was a horrible one, and you put it online, whatever. We're not closing, and we'll ride through the bad publicity. I'm sorry. Okay, we're, we're right. Hold on. Yep. Yep. Uh, talking about these violations, um, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you just give me oh, name sorry, sorry. Name and compliments. Um, We've all been in liquor stores where you walk in and you have you know five cases of wine stacked up. And you can buy from them. Well, we are a liquor store, but we also are a cafe. So if you come in, you might see a basket filled with mini champagne bottles on the floor. Well, guess what? That's a health code violation. And I have been cited for that. Now, is anyone going to be incredibly sick from it? No. Does it prevent us from mopping underneath it? No, we can pick it up and, and mop. But if we were listed for a health code violation and someone doesn't understand how minor that was, and then you have an angry mother who I didn't buy advertising for her kids play in town is mad at me. Yeah, then it turns into a whole other story. And I'll tell you, there are some people who have nothing better to do than to just well, slander businesses. Um, so Boston does, if you click on them, they will get the specifics. But um, in their list of past inspection reports, they'll have the date, and then they'll say past minor violations. Is that? Can I ask a question? I'm going to try not to speak anymore because I already took a lot of time, but i got a couple of things. What other industry is being approached like this? I don't know of any. <clears throat> to his point, you put something like this and you bang, and you hit, hit us for 20%, 30%, well, guess what? Everybody's going to go to the Encore for employment because they're already headed there already. <laughs> We're fighting every day to keep people. And if you hit a, a server or a cook, you know, if we got to cut back on cooks' hours, 10 hours, they're leaving us. That's the second thing. Um, I'm losing track. Oh, and the public has complete accessibility to everything they need currently. So why is why is this being approached? It, it, it makes it makes absolutely. Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just getting upset because I mean, we're, small businesses are up against a lot right now, and we're running on thin margins. And you guys are trying to put handcuffs on us even further. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not right. Okay. Okay, I saw our hand right next to you. Lisa. Oh, Lisa. Oh, Lisa, yes. Um, I'm Lisa Egan. Uh, I'm in Oakridge Road in Reading, and I'm also the director of the Chamber of Commerce. And I want to thank, first of all, all the businesses for coming out on short notice to advocate for yourself. So first, thank you. I would like to read a statement that my board of directors put in today's paper and also on the patch that I'm happy to share with. But could you could you provide paper. a uh, copy for we, it's Is that the one, yeah, copy we have? Yeah, actually, okay. Laura, but I'm it's happy. in the It's in the back. Oh, it is perfect. Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, well, so just for um, am I allowed to read it? Uh, yeah, she can read it just okay. for uh, reporting purposes, Laura. Just make sure. Oh, yes, that, it is. That Thank you. Gets in the um, minutes. Yeah, it, it makes it you don't have to type it because it's already on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the camera is. Oh, there's something with it. Oh, good. No, it's not. Oh, hello. <laughs> Is that your good side? No, no, no. I prefer not. But in any case, in all seriousness, 
an important issue, um, and the Chamber of Commerce believes the proposed policy changes, which requires infractions of the Board of Health, found during health inspections to be posted online, is extremely unfriendly to our local businesses. The current policy and inspection process has been working very successfully for many years. Um, Currently, there's been no major health issues in Reading, and we're thankful for that, and it's for a reason. And also, the point that no one has asked for any of this information in years speaks to the appetite for this information. It doesn't sound to me like it's there. No one's asking for it. Um, it's understandable that there are occasional minor issues, and I can't understand why a bottle can't be on the floor because I'm not safe surf certified. But for me to hear there's an infraction anywhere, it's going to put a seed of doubt in my mind. And I'm very concerned that our local businesses are going to be put under a microscope when they have 10 days by law to address their concerns, and it's always been taken care of very successfully and there are re-inspections and accountability as there should be and if there's any major issue there's also a public procedure to make sure the public is aware like it has happened in other towns as we all know um, our position is that the posting of any infraction online however small will garner a tremendous amount of negative feedback both unwarranted and unnecessary particularly on social media on behalf of all Reading residents, or excuse me, restaurants, um, we ask you to consider the unintended consequences of these policy changes, especially on behalf of our hardworking locally owned businesses, many of whom are here tonight. Um, even the whisper of an infraction can create a frenzy and could certainly affect a business's viability. Um, we've all talked about this already, but we, we feel it's going to cause a lot of unnecessarily unnecessary alarm. And if you're going to start posting infractions for the restaurants, where does it end? Are you going to start doing it for all the building inspectors in town? What about all the other inspections? What about septic and um, you know water issues? It could just really open a Pandora's box and I think cause a lot of undue stress. Um, actually, just tonight, Jean and I spent two hours right here in this room talking about economic development in Reading and how it's so great that there's all this business being built in town, businesses and um, apartments opening downtown. And I don't see how anyone's going to want to come to a town where they feel like they're held to the fire and put their feet um, and be held under a microscope. And how are we going to garner great businesses over at Gold Street or at the new Postmark um, building, which they're doing? I think it's going to really create a very negative reputation for the town and hinder a lot of the economic development. I know we just hired a director, and I can tell you this is going to—it's it's really put businesses out. So I'd like to consider that. Thank you. Thank you. I know gentleman had a hand up. Yeah. yeah. Bill Cushing from Christopher's Restaurant. Uh, we're one of those small mom and pop restaurants who've been in town for 27 years. Yep. Thankfully, we've been, we've been successful with this board <coughs> community. But again, we've seen a lot of changes in those 27 years. The town's grown a lot. We've also been through multiple health inspectors. Some have gone, come and gone and come back again. Um, and each one, I think, concentrates on certain things. So even though we've been there for 27 years in our last inspection, we were told that we were in violation of a certain sign. And nobody had ever told us that before, and we've been in, you know, in this location for 11 years. Um, so there's that, and like other people have already said, I think it's just gonna create a problem rather than to solve one. I don't think there's a problem. I mean, they write down, it's, it's like if people going on Yelp to do reviews on, your, on the food. Everybody's a critic these days, they're all a, you know, a food uh, expert. Um, and I think the same thing would happen here. Um, we would much rather have a customer come to us if there was an issue while they're in the restaurant so we can address it and fix it before it gets out. Um, and the same thing happens with the health department. They write down a violation, we fix it, and back and inspect it, and everything's fine. Um, the small things like that, the people don't have to know, not that we're not trying to be transparent, but like it's been said before, it, people don't understand People like to gossip. I mean, we have a lot of regular customers that come in, oh, did you hear about this, did you hear about that? <laughs> and I try not to give an opinion if it's some, you know, but that's 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 just human nature. So I just think it's it would be a bad idea. It would not be helpful to business at all. Okay. 
Um, I will take two more, and then I, I do want to finish the discussion. Yes, sir. Kevin, so Carlo Bacci, 494 Street, is the, maybe I'm under the wrong impression, is the instant violations part of this discussion tonight, or is that a separate discussion? When you said instant violations? On an, on an inspection. I, I, I heard that when she does an inspection, and it's a violation, it wouldn't be a, a, it would be a fine. Sorry, no, this, what did I say? A fine right away instead of... No, this is just, this, this really is reporting. This is not um, how uh, our health agent handles um, like when she's out on inspections. So this that's is something on the future agenda, or that's not even... That's not even something that we've discussed. Okay. Yeah, no. you have. Andrew and, and Freeman brought it up in uh, an earlier meeting that the lack of fines... Well, the lack of them, yeah. And yeah. We, I think meeting. at that time we addressed how, how Laura handles it. Right, um, I, I gather that that's something that they wanted to... Uh, Institute, so I, I have an interest in that as well. Well, because every if you get a fine for a minor violation, you got to do more business to make up for that. I think I think it's been brought up, but I, it's never been on our agenda to discuss in general. It was it's, it was brought up around inspections in general, but um, we've never requested as board members to have that as specific. We want to change how she handles doing that. We were reporting back on on the mechanism why that showed up as zero. Right, is because she does a good job working with the businesses right. in town and and teaching them this is what this is where you've gone wrong and, and lets them give them a chance to fix it right. you know, she's, if you don't like if you don't fix it I, you know she's she's gonna have to start bringing up the the uh, the fine book but so far everyone has been very compliant in town and they've fixed the infraction you know, that's, a good example, Kevin, uh, that's a good example of what can happen with telephone because that wasn't my intention uh, that's a legitimate question yep. but th there's a perception out there that that's where the direction this board is going Okay. So, and, and again, I'm glad to hear it's not, but this is a minor example of what's going to happen. You know, I just own a building in town that has a confectionery store in it. I'm not in business here anymore, but I've been in these guys' shoes for many years in the retail environment, pizza shops, ice cream, and this is just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Just, right. just to wrap it up, I mean, most of us who've been in writing businesses for a long time. Most of us, we go to each other's stores, whatever. We know each other. A lot of, well, I don't live in writing, but I feel like uh, I'm part of writing because I know pretty much everybody around here. Yeah. So if about transparency and everything, if I go to other people's restaurants, I've been to a restaurant and everything, I know what I'm looking at. I know what's dirty, what's clean, what's this and that. So I'm the first one to judge it. And if I'm willing to go to that, you know, but I know those, those, those things, that's, a, that's so, what I have to say. So the one thing I will just remind everybody in the room and, and for those watching at home, um, the, having a three-person board is very messy um, in the way we have to abide by uh, open meeting laws. Um, having a three-person board means that I can't have an offline conversation with any of my other board members um, just to bounce something off. Hey, you think this is a good idea, horrible idea, great idea. Um, I I've, I've find it very problematic, quite frankly, not being able to do that. So it, when these things play out in public, just bear with us a little bit. They have to play out in kind of a messy fashion like it, like it is tonight because this is the first time we've had a chance to actually talk about it together. And that's part of the process. I'm not a huge fan of it. It's got its pluses and minuses, um, obviously, but I just want folks to be aware of that. It's not... It, 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 if it feels like something is getting driven at you, it's not. It's being discussed in front of you in the open for the first time. And, and that's kind of where we are tonight. So I just I want to let people be aware of that. Um, it's an important component. Um, all right, with that said, um, I, I tend to agree, and, and I always have in, in regards to having something online with the folks in the room tonight. Um, I also think there is a simple mechanism that our health agent can report back to us as board members in regards to inspections of getting done and reinspected. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily disagree with that idea, um, but I think maybe for tonight's purposes, I don't know we're going to come to a, a conclusion in this tonight. Um, how's that, how, anybody else feel like putting this on as a continuation um, to discuss, or would you want to try to wrap something up one way or the other tonight? Take a little bit of a census. I mean, certainly open to discussing tonight but yes I would like to you know think about everything that everybody has said again just the spreadsheet you know look at other comparable towns more carefully at some of that but in light of the comments I've heard so I would prefer not to come to a decision tonight but to have a discussion yeah I agree can I um, 
just going to pass to All right. on this table. <laughs> uh, this is just an example of some of the level of information that um, a larger, a bit larger town gives, but it shows how they track things and uh, the different categories, which I think is... Do you have this somewhere that you, we can get uh, copies of? I need to email it. Yeah, just email yes. it to um, Laura and she can distribute it. Yep. Yep. Um, that would be good. Um, yeah, again, this started out more as a, um, as, as I said earlier, as a mechanism to report back of a man for our health agent report back to this board. Um, that's really kind of where this where this came about from, but it's, it's certainly good to get feedback. I know we said it in a couple of meetings back when we first started to discuss this, so we definitely want feedback from um, uh, the folks that are going to be involved, the stakeholders, so I appreciate everybody coming out here tonight and giving us your, just that, your thoughts and perspectives on it. Um, it is greatly appreciated, and, we, and uh, we will take that information and we will use it wisely. Um, with that said, I, I will um, take a five-minute break to let the room clear before we go on to the next topic. Good. Okay. <laughs> to let them know if this is now going to be up there on the web page and who do we direct people to if they have questions on what this means are we sending them to this board like I just I, I'm concerned from the school standpoint if a parent sees this after what happened earlier in the year with the non mm -hmm. issue that literally exploded on Facebook we have we came to the Board of Health it blew it Got on crazy. Facebook, yes, it yeah. did. On yep. Facebook, we came here, we had a team number of meetings. So I need to make sure my committee is up to speed with whatever information on the school we sure. need. So did everybody have a chance to sign in tonight? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I know, Lisa, you probably have a lot of um, information as well. Um, I, I would certainly extend this courtesy. I, we may talk about it a few times um, at, at different meetings, but... If something that we we, we could. I don't know that we'd have to rise to a level of public hearing, but certainly before taking any vote on a final, yeah. um, we would give I, anyone courtesy. I personally would say not a public vote on this because anybody in the town is going to say, oh, yeah, we want to see that. Sure. This is to do with the board, the health department, and the businesses in town. It's not open to, for public voting or open as far as I'm concerned. I think there's a representative here from probably every restaurant, every dining establishment, and every convenience store in town. I think, and the schools are represented as well. So I think this is all you need. But when you ask the question about the vote, I would personally like if you're going to have what you say you're only a four person. Four three. three, three. We have we have uh, two associate uh, positions as well. Two, but three on the three voting votes. That's it. Okay. So I would definitely want to know who voted what way and why. Okay. If we're only talking about only two people need to say yes and right now it almost sounds like the three on the table are leaning towards the way of yes and I would also like it separated that if there is an option of what is reported to you from the health department and to what's reported to the public the public part of it should be 100% taken out of this it's, it's all no better all public all public. All public. All public. All public. so as anything happens of the three voting members are they unanimous or is a majority it's majority so two thirds yeah, so that's... Yeah, so can I say just one little quick thing? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. Very quick, please. We're a small town, right, of small town people, employing a lot of small town people, right? We're Reading, right? We, we want to feel that the government is there to support us, not to reprimand us or, or slap our wrist. We want to feel like we're in, in cooperation, right? Um, and I would think you would want that, too. Yep. You know, I mean, we're in competition. Reading is in competition okay. with Wakefield, Stoneham, Melrose, Everett, right? Linfield. Uh, Linfield. Yeah, right. I mean, it's I mean, right. We're right. We want to economic development. I, Twelve years ago, when I came, I was approached to come here because it, the economic or uh, the business community was was struggling. 
you got a lot of good people here trying really hard to work well with planning board and board of health and the town. You know, th this just seems very much against that, against the stream of the. If you guys have something you want to do to work with us, I think that's great. If you want to clean up the sheet, if you want, you know, if you want to fine tune some things that are missing, but this is this is a this is a billboard of shame. That's just it's just it's going to destroy it's going to destroy the town. So I, here's the one thing I'll say: we, we certainly, um, as I said earlier, we certainly do appreciate everybody coming out and their, and their time coming out tonight. Um, we do want that information. We wanted to hear what our folks had to say. So this was this to me was a very good night in that regard. Um, I, you know, I certainly would not put anything on here to take a vote without everyone being um, duly acknowledged what it, what it is we're voting on. Um, I'd even go so far as we can if we can get a sample of it um, out to folks in time so they could digest it a little bit as well. Um, even if we come up with something, we say, oh, this is a great idea tonight. All right, table it. Next meeting, let's get it out to everybody. Let's make sure folks have, have a chance to come in and weigh on it. So uh, I, we certainly will extend that courtesy to everybody in this room that we're not going to take a vote without you all knowing uh, exactly what's going on. When you do have your vote, it will be on the agenda? So, so. Oh, it has to be. Okay. Yeah, it would have to be. Yeah, and, and you know what? We'll list it exactly as an agenda item. Vote okay. to. I just want to make one plug. Okay. For everyone in this room, if you go to the Town of Reading website, you, you can subscribe to the Board of Health agenda with the click of the mouse. Okay. Um, I, we'll, I didn't see I was on the, on the website. I didn't see that. Uh, uh, anybody that has a question about it, call. let me know. Oh, okay. I'm Gene Delios. I'll show you in two seconds how to do it. It's very easy. You will automatically get that agenda electronically. No human being. You'll automatically get it. <laughs> so that being said, the population of Reading, the citizens of Reading, if there was a problem with a restaurant, they could click on that and get it too without... 100%. Without blasting, email blasting. Yep. Is that the only uh, board that you do that for? Or is every board. board. You can click every board. There's about 40 boards in the town of Reading. I just I kind of want to ask, I don't need to repeat everything okay. that everybody said here, but totally I'm, I'm with every single person here. But I just wanted to quickly address, you know, the, the idea that other cities and towns do this. If you guys are going to come back and discuss this, I think that it would be very pertinent to say this city does this, this city does this, this city does this, these are their sizes, these are their businesses, and these have been the results of that happening because just saying Boston does this. I looked up Boston before I lost my connection. I explained it's terrible. Um, I just saw the two suspensions yeah. and one that's been reinstated in Boston. I and I'm sure it's there, maybe because she says it's there. But I only saw that, and that's fine. You want to suspend somebody? I think that would be fine for everybody to know. That's that's fine to shame somebody. Sure. But minor infractions again. I mean, let's let's see what everybody else is doing and what has been the impact. To just say, oh, this is a great idea. Well, I mean, lots of things are great ideas until they're put into practice. Yeah. And the size of the town, the size of the businesses, how does that affect it? And show me examples, real examples. Don't just say, you know, maybe out in New York. New York's not ready. New York's not the North Shore of Massachusetts. New, you know, New York is not North Shore Eats with 39,000 members on it, all discussing, oh, this waitress had a bad night. Or, oh, I, I waited in line for 20 minutes for my coffee, not realizing that somebody was sick and stayed home because we have special reporting guidelines, and I'm sorry, but we did the best we could. But let's blow it up. So I think it should be, if you're going to make something, make it really specific and show why this is a great idea. Because, you know, loosely saying places here and there, that's not really, you know, I can say loosely places here and there do lots of things. That doesn't make them a benefit to this town or any of the businesses here. Because we're employing people from this town. Okay, I'm sorry, did you give anything with the... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm Liam from Maplewood. Okay, oh. thank you. All right, um, okay, with that, we do need them to... talk to before they leave? Because I, I don't know if I missed any hands. It's going to look like it. Okay. Thank you. Um, we do need to move on to other uh, items. Again, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. We'll take a quick uh, five minute break here while the room clears. I'm sure, unless you folks want to st stay around and listen to minutes. <laughs> <Sorry, being supported. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs>
interesting to have that room full of folks in here. Right. <laughs> All right. So this next one is actually will be very brief and review the proposed pesticide regulation tree lawn policy. I did reach out to the select board chair. Um, we had a discussion in regards to kind of next steps and that's kind of where we're at with this. I know um, Ann Landry sent me some, um, select board member Ann Landry sent me some uh, emails in regards to her questions that she had and she had brought up um, something that we had a contradictory statements, for example, in, in the policy, or excuse me, in the regulation itself. Um, so what I told the chair of the select board so what would really be helpful to us um, to kind of move this thing along is to have um, the select board send us all their comments, suggestions, edits, whatever it might be, you know, similar to what uh, Ann had sent me, then we can discuss those uh, at our next meeting, kind of all review them, discuss them, incorporate them, not incorporate them, depending on what they are, um, that type of deal, um, rather than trying to go back and doing it on the floor of, uh, of a joint meeting, which is just not worth it. <laughs> um, so uh, in regards to having this on here tonight, I just wanted to go over a little bit from a procedural standpoint. We discussed that and then probably going on like late August or early September, late September, it doesn't really matter at that point, but um, to get back in front of the select board with something that we now think this is what we have uh, and, and kind of go from there with it and see if it, at that point it should be comfortable for them to send the town council. I have one suggested item, but sure. can I save that for... You know, yeah, save it because okay. we're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll pull it apart in the next okay. meeting. I figure we'll do it that way. Yeah, I've suggested it too, but it's based on their conversation. So she's sending us... She is, She and she also so said it might be a good idea for us as board members to go back and watch that meeting because there were some, you know, there was a lot of things being thrown out, but I did ask, I said, you know, it would be helpful too to ask everybody to send it to us. So I was going to have the liaisons just remind her at, uh, at the next meeting to, you know, ask the board to do just that, send us their thoughts uh, on it. So I'll just, I'll shoot a quick uh, message out uh, to her to just remind her to please put that on as a comment at, her, at the next, I think there's one coming up next Tuesday. Uh, I think. Yes. Um, and then we can get we can get it on to our, uh, into July, and then theoretically we can maybe have a joint meeting in, in August uh, with them. It's hopefully a finished product that we, uh, we can send to town council if everyone's okay with that process. All right. Um, last thing we have is a review of minutes. Does everybody have a chance to review the two minutes we have here? I will take a motion to accept the minutes from the uh, May 21st, 2019 for a health meeting. Sorry, May? Yes, okay. May 21st, 2000. It was the motion, the motion was moved, correct, somebody? Somebody made the motion that I just said? Oh, well, I was going to actually just... Yeah, I know. We gotta, we gotta we have, to uh, have something make the motion before we can discuss it. Sorry. Oh, oh <laughs> accept. Motion to accept. <laughs> okay, the minutes from May. Wait, I'm not looking at twenty first, two thousand nineteen. Oh, it is May twenty first. Great. So there are a couple minor spellings, and it's just a. Uh, Residence. Do we do we have, do we have the clarifying? Uh, yeah, it's S. Yeah, S eight 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 eight
Any other further discussion on the minutes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I should have. I shouldn't have made the motion. But I already changed something from the last one. But the um, under the chair report, the vaping campaign that I was mentioning is the Massachusetts vaping campaign. It's not our CASA, so I don't know if people would not understand that from oh. reading it. Um, Yes. I mean, I'm yeah. basically fine with what it, doesn't it is. It just says their vaping campaign. Oh, that's, I mean, so, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, so minutes are um, something, and this is going on, I think, at the select board level discussion on uh, how much to put into these. These are not... Not they don't have to be training scripts, correct? <laughs> you know, it's it's more it's more generally drill. This vote was taken on this subject matter, but yeah, you know, so we, I think there we're okay with. Okay. All right. So then that has been seconded. There are no any other changes to May twenty first. Okay. All those in favor? Three zero. And accept. Uh, accept a motion to um, accept the Aye. April 23rd, 2019 Board of Health Minutes. Someone just has to say so moved. moved. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any changes on this one? I think this is the one that we actually, it was we already changed it, right? Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Are you satisfied with that? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, for the discussion, all those in favor? 3-0. And I accept a motion to um, turn one out of my head to leave. <laughs> What's the turn? Turn, turn. Thank you. Can right. you talk about the next meeting before you oh, adjourn? Yeah, um, we can talk about good. the next meeting, yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just so we get that on our calendar. Sure. So then. Discussion. If we move the dates around, or is it just a tough month for you? Uh, we can move the dates around. Not that it, I mean, we we can <laughs> going we can do the we can. From like the eighth to the sixteenth. Okay. Of July. Okay. So when? Sorry, what is the current lease schedule? The fifteenth is the current. Okay. So if we did it the. Um, so we, I'm not available the week after. On that Monday. Yeah. Okay. The sixteenth. You say you're gone through the 15th or the 16th? I'm not available on the 16th. Um, okay, so maybe what we'll do then is we'll hold off on putting on inspections until August. Okay. Do we want to skip July meeting completely in case, unless something major comes up? Um, what do we, what do we, uh, we skip the summons. Yeah. For July and August? Usually. Unless something that has to be addressed comes up. So, Hmm. Yeah. We did do August, but it was the beginning. I mean, and do, do we have it? Do we have anything pressing? I mean, if we move in, if we move everything up, and it's not. It's just it's, the pesticides. Right. Yeah. And, and at this point, we're in the middle of the season, so we're really right. we're on the no gun to get that done before before December hits, anyways. Right. <laughs> right. Um, Okay, so seeing how there's nothing really um, yet, yeah, unless something um, urgent comes up, we'll we'll hold the um, the plot of the fifteenth because you got to you got to have something up there, right? Or can you just no? I guess we could just meet within forty eight hours. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Let's let's cancel it then, and if we need to, we can post within forty eight hours. And what about August? So then that brings us to the next meeting would be August nineteenth. Um, so then we would need to have, uh, for August, we would need to definitely uh, put on pesticides as, as topic number one, major topic of discussion two. Um, at that point, we should have plenty of feedback from the select board um, to I'd put it down as a uh, revised regulation on pesticide um, as the agenda item and minutes tonight. Obviously minutes. Yep. Uh, chair, health agent report. And we should discuss, um, we should put this format probably on the next few because it seems like it's going to be more than one 
um, so to at least begin begin discussion on how the board wants to handle um, so the same then chair report health agent report not the not, report not the signs and minutes not exactly the same we're not revising monthly health agent report details should be reviewed we can and let, we can remove the part about um, linking spreadsheet to health page but more discussing content of reporting back to the board I think that my two cents. Yep. Okay. I think that makes it unclear because everybody's concerned that reporting it to the board doesn't mean that it's going to be public knowledge anymore. That was the big thing tonight. So you think leaving the language the same helps people know that it's the same topic you discussed? Because it is the same topic, really. Yeah, yeah it is the same topic. People yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Just because fine. I don't yeah. want it to look like now. Yeah, it's consistent. It's yep. still, it's consistent. Yeah. still yep. public information. Yep, yep, that's fine. It's, it's consistent that way. Well, we and can change it to discussion of, yeah, rather we? than making it sound like we're implementing something, because we're not going to be. So discussion right. of healthy report? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Maybe that's. Yep, that's good. A little bit less. And then do we add as a separate agenda item the updated food inspection form? Oh yeah, we should we should have that on there. Is that the, the one from 2013? That we should at least put it on so we could have yeah. a quick discussion about it. Because um, I'd like to hear for more information about, about the mechanics of that. Um, so we should, yeah, so we'd have to have it on there. Um, begin discussion. <laughs> so this is not something we have to spend a lot of time on because we'll have, we'll have two other items on there that we do. I would really love to finish one item before we added more items. Uh, if that's possible. Which one do we get finished? I don't know. We've been on one for four years and one how, for two how about, years. How about this? So um, how about this? How about an update about the new regulation? It doesn't have to be necessarily a discussion. I, I, I don't even know the the, the differences with what we're doing there. Let's talk about the things that we would yeah, need. Yeah, just an update handle. on it. Right. This could even. So we're going to just talk about it. Yeah, to talk about the things we would need, the steps we would need to take to get to where, and maybe think of a timeline. Is that the timeline? Again, I, again I, I can't get to a timeline because I can. I, I'm so swamped with all these emails about both these subjects mm -hmm. that I don't even get out to do an inspection until two o'clock in the afternoon, and I leave at five thirty. So do I don't know how I'm going to even get to that, but I can cut back on inspections and work on it. Well, I'm wondering if we need to, like, given that you were saying the pesticide regulation doesn't have to be implemented or we don't have to decide on that until later in the fall, then do we need to prioritize this over something else? I would because it sounds like we're further behind on this. Well, I think we should get the two things we have in front of us out of the way. Yes. Because uh, yeah, this, this seems like, like this could be a lot finished. a lot um, bigger scope yeah. um, anytime you have to implement the new new regulations are, um, from the state. It's never an easy thing. And there are plenty of towns that aren't doing it. The state, yeah, I as of, as I of right now. I haven't had time to take the class because I've been swamped with this stuff. As of right now, the state hasn't told us we have to have it done by a certain date, so there's no, there's no timeline on this. Um, we've got these two things that have been in the some of them in the works for two years now. I, I, I would like to kind of clear that off, get them get them done, get and, them behind us. And by then, maybe I'll have time to actually go to the class this what year. What is the piece of paper? Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. I only have two. Oh, I'm just curious. Sure paper. Sure. Form. I wasn't, able to, I wasn't able to go to the class this year because that's when Cammy was starting, so we didn't have enough manpower to actually attend it. They do have um, the slides. I'm, but I'm only one person. I know. Slides. But the slides is for reference. That we okay. Look at the yes. slides are online. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So why don't we... Um, why don't we do this? Why don't we handle the two things we have at the, at the August meeting, um, and then we'll have a discussion at the end of that meeting to see if we, when, when we can discuss this. I think we'll probably have a better feeling for, for what we have in front of us. Is there, I'm thinking out loud here, I'm just wondering if there's any way that Laura could share with us and, and any of the, anybody else on the board who has um, comments on the pesticide regulation, and that we could share back with her any of our edits so to speed things up? Yeah, when we come to the August meeting, she's like, these are all the edits that have been proposed. And I don't know if that puts too much of a burden or if that's a way to speed up. The only the only problem with that is if the, the three of us have three different comments on that edit, and then 
it's, it, it dead ends at her. I mean, then it can't come back to us all because, you know, Eleanor said this on the thing that you said that about, and they were two right. different things. So, I mean, we could do like the um, track changes or the review function in Word. I don't know if we use Word. Will allow you to just combine all the documents. Once you do combine, it tells you a comment of which you know. So if three people edited the same sentence, it tells you who made which of those edits. Um, well, I, I think the edits. But, we have a lot, I think we've, what we've done with the document now, there is a lot of uh, editing that's gone on with it. Mm -hmm. I think what the select board is, has been pointing out are things that are structural in nature. In other words, no. we just incorporate it. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot that we have to discuss on it other than, oh, that's a good point, that these are contradictory statements. Let's change that. And we can kind of, yeah, we can, I mean, we can kind of do that on the fly. Okay. If, if it looks like we're getting back, you know, specific feedbacks that get a little bit more in depth into it, we're probably just going to have to have a couple of meetings. Like this, you know. So let's see what we get back uh, first and then we'll, and, and we'll put that on can the agenda we, item. We get, can we see the things that you get prior to the no, okay. the feedback. The feedback. No, no, I'm, I'm going to get it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. No, we're going to get that out. Have everybody get that. So we just can't. Obviously, you know, we just can't uh, discuss it enough. But at least then you'll, you'll, we'll, we'll know. We'll come in knowing we're either finishing tonight or not. <laughs> so you're going to send me the feedback from the select board, and I'm going to send it up to everyone. I was right. actually going to um, instruct them to send it to Bob. Bob will most likely send it right down the chain, chain to you. And I'll send it up. Okay. Something else that's right. Because yeah. then we're keeping, then they're handling their yeah. side and we're handling our that's side. That's his board, so. Yeah. Hopefully this is a quick comment. Um, but so you had mentioned, do we need to have a public comment on this? And we were thinking maybe, sorry, the previous discussion about what we would post on the website, going backward. And a comment was made that, um, you know, this needs to be a discussion between the restaurants and the Board of Health, but I do think the public absolutely needs a chance to weigh in on the discussion. So I don't know the best way for making sure that any citizen can comment. Um, Are we talking about the pesticides or the health agent report? The, well, the um, part of the health agent report that's related to posting any food inspection information online. So, I mean, the, you know, the businesses were notified, and I just want to make sure that any members of the public who want to comment. Yeah, I mean, where it's not um, really a, a, it's not so much a policy or regulation, this is much of the typically the things that you would have um, those those types of public hearings on. Um, I don't, I don't know, raise us to that. I think we, we, we can do is keep it on the agenda item, um, and people feel so move to come in and discuss it, they can come in and discuss it. If we want to, there's any special way to post it out, there really isn't. There is a policy change. It's not a written policy. It's not a written policy. It's a draft. Right. Um, but I think it's something to consider as we move closer to a actual solution. Right yeah. now, we're not we're not even close. Like this is like probably six months down the line. Like I don't envision us implementing this anytime soon. There's way too much swirl and discussion. I don't feel like we have a really clear idea of what that solution is yet. So I think that's something to consider, but closer to the end. Yeah, I agree. I, I think, again, we should probably get the what before we have people comment on it. Um, as we saw tonight, we didn't even have the what tonight, and there was lots of comments on it. So but I think let's let's get the what it is a, a little bit more close, and then, then it makes sense um, to have comment on that. Was somebody going to follow up on um, what other communities do? I, I, I know there were a couple of comments that said, you know, mm -hmm. Give us some examples of what similar, you know, comparables kind of thing. Yeah. I heard that tonight. I, I wasn't sure if anybody I mean, on I the board that. was going to. I can look at that. I've already looked at So we at have some. 23 comparable peer communities. That's They're listed on the website. And um, anytime we do comps, we go by those 23 peer communities. So. Okay. I think as a town, we've decided that that's the best way to do comps. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that makes sense for economic and financial things. I'm not sure it necessarily makes sense for public health, but. Well, you could even, even, even that. Uh, town you could even go with just not yeah. necessarily all of them, but even local. Um, uh, local towns as well. Yeah, too. the cops are what you would imagine. What Stoneham do, what Melrose do. Right. You know, it, it, it's not. Twenty you know, to thirty thousand people, small towns. It's, yeah. It's, it's comparable right. on a number of fronts. And um, when we did our whole um, economic development analysis of um, the CIP that we were seeing, we weren't getting any benefit from. That's the, those are the comps we used. So we've used it in planning, we've used it in every facet of um, work that I've been involved in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it definitely makes sense to have an idea of the peer communities and to have an idea of sort of an ideal standard that we would move toward you know, based on Massachusetts regulations um, so that we can see you know, what are people around us doing, what's, where would we want to move to if we we're moving at all to help us make that decision about you know, I always think of it in terms of distance. <laughs> How much closer do we need to move, or are we fine where we are? Well, we talked about the city of Newton, and I know you reached out to the um, software vendor to find yeah. out about software. Um, yeah, so, so actually, he said he could come to him. So, okay, so back up. <laughs> uh, okay, so time out on software, <laughs> on IT. Yeah. Um, you know, you guys do whatever you want as volunteers. Yeah. But when you contact our software vendor, that is out of bounds for our IT folks. When I told them that we had a meeting and we talked about this, and they were like, everything through the for the ven vendor should go through IT. Yeah, um, I and that's why I contacted you after I reached out to him. I, I didn't know he was a vendor. I actually thought he was just, I, I was literally just looking for, um, I had noticed on an old health data report, the prior health agent had mentioned using view permit for health department functions and inspections and so I sir, I couldn't find view permit because they they are now I guess viewpoint I don't know point, yeah. so um, I was searching for that type of program product and that's how I got found viewpoint and I just sent an email to their info what you know email address just asking what sort of services do you offer? Mm -hmm. And he reached out, and then that's when I found it. That's when I found out that he was potentially working with Reddick, maybe, and that's when I reached out to you. Yeah, yeah. And so then we, that's where it We have um, the IT staff, I think there's like five or six people, and um, we now have a software coordinator. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with the software coordinator. I, I don't have an answer to your question, yeah. um, but that's we are um, looking and investigating and we're actually negotiating. So that's why yeah. board members calling um, any of our vendors, I, I just ask right. you if you if you have any questions, if you could run it through, through me or Laura first, okay. yeah. because we are in the process of negotiating, yeah. and I just didn't want sure. to tip that's, our hand. That's, so that's, I, that's why I yep. didn't want to respond yeah. to your email. That's why. That's, that's why. I, yeah. <laughs> because I didn't know. Right. Are we? Uh, I was going to say yeah. Okay. Let's. Are we? Are we good for tonight? We have everything. Everybody. Everything they need. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. Seconded. All in favor. Three zero. Right. <laughs>